our final award dinner, uh, winner, <laughs> that's a premature announcement of my final award dinner, no. Um, the final award winner tonight is Leah Shakdiel. Um, she's a visionary, never afraid to go against the grain. She came to prominence in 1988 when she became the first woman to sit on a local religious council. Leah is an observant Jew, has committed her life to building a just and tolerant Israel. Her list of achievements is long, from campaigning for Bedouin rights, to helping improve her hometown of Yoroham, to her unending work as a peace activist. As a leader and as an inspiration, she's undoubtedly an extremely worthy recipient of our award. Before I ask Leah to come up, we're going to show you a short film. You can tell how impatient I was with those filmmakers. <laughs> The New Israel Fund became part of my life in 1987 when I discovered that it backs the Association for Civil Rights in Israel, the organization that represented me successfully in my struggle to become the first woman in Israel to serve on a municipal religious council. So this is my claim to fame. But the scope of my commitments that go hand in hand with the NIF extends much further. I believe that for the Jewish state of Israel to thrive, it must engage in two simultaneous projects. On the one hand, Israel must nurture humanistic perceptions of Israeli Jewishness. This project has two parallel trajectories one for the religious Israeli Jews and one for the non-religious among us. Religious Jews in Israel often abuse the current historic moment of Jewish sovereignty in our land as a springboard for promoting the most ethnocentric, racist, belligerent, and xenophobic versions of our rich tradition. Push these perceptions to center stage, present them not only as the mainstream of Torah Judaism, but even as the one and only truth from heaven. This mindset is unfortunately complemented by the estrangement of many non-religious Jews from anything Jewish, even from the very word Jew, which is overshadowed by their self-identification as Israelis only. We must emphasize daily that what unites us is our pride in our ancient and vibrant culture, which is both national and universal in its values, as the Bible is described in the Declaration of the Establishment of the State. The dooming alternative is to be united by militarism, haunted by the Holocaust, turning our backs on peace. On the other hand, I believe that it is impossible to propagate humanistic Israeli Jewishness in a society plagued by sharp economic gaps between the haves and the have-nots. Cruel competitiveness that brands many as totally redundant in today's world abdication of governmental, governmental responsibilities to universal welfare and equal opportunity to all in education, welfare, health, and housing. Here too, it is necessary to give voice to policies of distributive justice to all peripheries, be they geographical, ethnic, genderial, religious. The precious life of every individual who is like a whole world should be accentuated as an issue of identity and culture, but also as an issue of national budgeting, administration, and ruling. 
So I teach Jews and Arabs, religious and non-religious. I fight for justice for women, justice for the Bedouins of the Negev, justice for the Palestinians in the West Bank, justice for my townspeople in Yerucham, and I do all of this as an Orthodox Israeli Jew. I thank you all for supporting my work and for honoring me here tonight. Thank you.